Hi, thanks for joining me. My name's Kelly Greatalk. I'm a plastic surgery recovery nurse. Today's topic I'm really excited about um, talking to you about breast reduction surgery recovery. So again, my name's Kelly Greatalk. I'm a plastic surgery recovery nurse. I travel around the country and I take care of patients in their home or hotel room or Airbnb, wherever they choose to recover after plastic surgery. Thanks again for joining me. Please hit subscribe so you won't miss any new videos. And I'm supposed to this time supposed to say, give this video a thumbs up if you find the content helpful. And um, I just, you know, I fairly, fairly recently created this channel because I want to be able to kind of take what I've had on my other social media platforms and be able to really take that content and really dive in deeper and talk to you, for example, today about breast reduction. So I'm going to be talking about what it usually looks like when you get home after your, product, your breast reduction, what to expect, um, drains, no drains, pain, your, your compression broad diet, all the things that I help my patients with when I'm recovering them. I wanna share that with you so you have the best recovery and the best result possible. Now I do have to warn you, I've got two little Shih Tzus running around my house, so if any of them try to get on camera, I apologize now. Okay, jumping in. So first, you're gonna come out of your surgery and you're going to have a bra on. It's gonna be a bra on bra that they put on you while you were in surgery, okay? Um, and let me also start by saying, I recover for tons of different surgeons. Every surgeon is different. Of course, my disclaimer, you always want to follow your specific surgeon's orders. I just want to kind of give you a general idea because I know a lot of times, other than that sheet of paper the doctor gives you, people really don't know what to expect. So here goes. So. Compression, it's not really compression, but it's just a, a bit of a bit of a compression bra you're gonna be in. It usually has eye hooks and um, it's a little bit tighter, and of course you're gonna swell a little bit so we'll, we'll get feel a little bit tighter over time. So you definitely want to keep this bra on. I also recommend a great idea is if you order a backup bra, like um, you can even call your surgeon's patient care coordinator or find out exactly what bra they want you in and buy a backup. That's great because then you can change it out, you know. Um, during your first shower, you can just put a fresh one on, wash the other one. It's just nice to be able to switch it out. You'll just feel more fresh, and of course, that's always a good thing. People often ask me, will I be out of it after surgery? You know, you won't. <laughs> People never think they're out of it, but they never really remember much about the first 24 hours. My patients never remember the ride home. Uh, usually day two or three, I'm answering a lot of the same questions. Oh, do you have any kids? Did I, you know, these things like that. So. It actually makes it really important to make sure that if you, whether you hire a nurse or you, you know, um, have your girlfriend, your sister, your husband, your whoever is going to be taking care of you, it's even more important that you that you really give them a sense of what it's going to look like, what your plan is, and just how you want things to go. And and we'll get to a lot of that, but um, in a minute. Um, but it's important to kind of have them on board because they're going to kind of help guide you when you're not your normal, you're not really with it due to anesthesia, due to you're relaxed because the surgery is finally behind you, due to narcotics, whatever it is, when you're not kind of your normal self, they're gonna be the one that's kind of stepping in and guiding you on all these important things that you're learning right now because you might buy into all of this right now, but that first 24 hours, you just may not be your normal self and you want your person to have already bought in and know the plan. So next I'm gonna talk about drains because this is a big source of anxiety for anybody that reaches out to me and all of my clients. People are always really worried about drains. So you, if you have drains, it's usually something like this. It's gonna be, usually this is the kind of drain you're gonna have if you have one. It's a Jackson Pratt drain and it's this little concave bulb, okay? And I first, let me just give you a little pep talk about this and say, these things, you're gonna worry about it, and then after you know a few hours, you're gonna be like, oh, no big deal. So please try to take some of that comfort now and realize this is going to aid in your healing should your doctor use this. Some doctors, uh, some surgeons don't use these and they kind of have drainless breast reductions. Um, so you can also ask about that. And if they don't use one of these drains, don't worry. Uh, it's Don't worry either way, whether you have one or you don't, don't worry. But um, if you do have one of these, it really will help just, it takes away the some of the fluid that's gonna be potentially building up, and I think it just expedites your recovery. If you don't have one of these, ask your surgeon why, and they're gonna have a great answer, and they're gonna make you feel great about it. So that's that. I have um, detailed instructions on 
the best way to do this in my plastic surgery recovery guide. I go actually do it and go through it with fluid in there and really walk you through it. There's a lot of content out there on the internet that is not maybe the best. So make sure you are either getting it from my video or really make sure you're watching it from a good source. People are always concerned about, am I going to scar? That is a very hard question to answer just because first off, well, let's just, let's just start with the very basics. You're cutting the skin. So the body has to heal. And so of course it's not gonna be a seamless transition, okay? That's just, that's just the reality of making an incision in the skin and having it heal. A lot of your potential to scar or not is based on genetics, based on your skin, based on you know sun exposure. Obviously with a breast reduction, you're not worrying as much about uh, sun exposure um, unless you, 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 know, you go to a lot of topless beaches, no judgment, um, live your best life. But pretty much it's, it's really based on, like I said, genetics and also how well you recover, how well you take care of your breasts. And so what I mean by this, you really wanna make sure you're following your surgeon's orders. Now, things have changed a bit. So some surgeons now, they don't want you to move at all. They kind of want you to keep your arms down. You just kind of wanna, you know, when you're walking, you're probably gonna hunch a little bit, but you're definitely just gonna wanna kind of protect yourself and not use your arms, okay? Some surgeons will actually want you to have very gentle, slow, like stretching movements a few times a day. They're gonna tell you what they want you to do. Um, and then either way, you don't want to be pushing and pulling, okay? And what's gonna happen is you're gonna start to be feeling good like day three or four and like, I got this. And then you're gonna just overdo it a little bit. That's human nature. You're gonna overdo it and the minute you overdo it, you're gonna go woo and you're gonna feel that you overdid it a little bit. So then just don't worry, but you just wanna take it easy and just kind of go back to, okay, really just being careful. All of those little nerve endings are waking up. All of those little muscle fibers are trying to get back and heal. And you want to allow them the, to do that. By continually overdoing it, you're not going to have optimal healing, which I think is going to affect your scarring and just the musculature that's trying to heal underneath. So you want to just give your body the best chance to heal. Hot flash, putting my hair up. Okay, so let's talk about pain. I've had this runs the gamut. I've had patients that don't even use narcotics and we just really focus on icing if the surgeon is okay with icing. And then some patients use narcotics and it's more manageable. Some things that will help with pain. You want to sleep elevated and I would not rely on pillows. You're gonna want a wedge pillow. And I don't recommend any specific brand. There are a bunch of them online for all different price ranges. The most important part of the wedge pillow is I would get a wedge pillow that has an accompanying smaller wedge pillow for under your knees. And it's just gonna help you get in and out of bed easier and get comfortable super quick. And you want, to, you want to make sure you're sleeping elevated and just piling, I've tried with patients, piling up a bunch of pillows and it just doesn't work. You're slipping and sliding and it just doesn't work. So the wedge pillow will be great. And then you can put a pillow under the wedge pillow if you feel like you need to be up a little bit higher. It just really gives you this sturdy foundation that's gonna make you super comfortable and that's gonna keep your swelling down and just really help make you comfortable and help you heal better. If your bra, after a while, especially once you start to swell a little bit, if you're starting to feel pain kind of under here at the incision line or discomfort, sometimes the bra can like kind of cut into you a little bit. So sometimes even gently just moving the seam of the bra or even have your patient, your person help you with it, even down, down below if they can just gently kind of every few hours just kind of pull it down or pull it up, just moving it, will, you'll feel it right away. You'll go, oh yeah, it'll just give you some relief. And under here, one thing you can do if that kind of incision is bothering you and if you feel like your seam is cutting right into that incision line, two things that are um, great to do. You can take some, some clean four by fours and you can just literally pull out your bra a little bit and just fold them in and create just a little bit of a barrier between your skin and between the bra, okay? Or for some people that want a lot more padding, sometimes I even suggest taking maxi pads and you can put those under, under there. And uh, I would definitely make sure they're super clean. Before surgery, I would go get just a small pack of the individually wrapped maxi pads. So it's great because then you just open them up and you know they're super clean and then you just put them under there. And then sometimes if you have any drainage, you probably won't have a lot of drainage, but if you have any drainage, they can kind of catch a few drips and um, that'll just kind of save your bra for a little longer from getting, getting a little gunky. Did I just say gunky? Yeah, I said gunky. 
A lot of patients always ask me if this is covered by insurance. I would definitely run that by your surgeon. You know, I think I had one woman, one patient one time who had it paid for by insurance. I will say she strode, showed a very strong history of back and shoulder pain. Um, sometimes you kind of have to create a case, you know, show I've been treated for back pain. I've done all the things. I've gone to a, you know, physical therapist, done all these things um, to show some sort of history that you've tried to deal with it. And then her, her breast uh, reduction, I'm not sure if the whole thing was covered, but definitely insurance helped out with that. But that was kind of an outlier situation. Usually my patients have to pay for this themselves. Okay, moving on to icing. Surgeons really differ on this, whether they want you icing or not. And so definitely you wanna ask what their icing protocols are. Some surgeons don't want you to have any ice on your nipple line. Some surgeons don't want any on the incision line. Some are okay with all of it. So you definitely wanna ask if even if they're not okay, they don't want you to do any any um, icing, I definitely would have an, uh, one of those soft uh, pliable ice packs available for icing right up here. And sometimes even behind your neck, which that seems like those areas wouldn't be helpful. But I'm telling you, if you're between pain medicine and like you, you just took one, it hasn't kicked in or you're between or you're just a little uncomfortable, icing here and behind your neck really will, really will help. Um, what else? Oh, and also low on your lower back, some heat. That also is kind of helpful just to help you get comfortable. And again, if your surgeon is okay with icing, before you even reach for any pain medication, I would ice. People really undervalue the benefits of ice and I'm, I have found it is, it's always the first thing I do when someone starts to say, I'm a little uncomfortable. If their doctor's okay with icing, we go for some ice packs. And you wanna take the soft ice packs and you just wanna put them in um, in like an old pillowcase or wrap them in something so the ice pack isn't directly on your skin. Now I wanna talk a little bit about food. I'm, I have other videos that talk all about food, but I just wanna give you a little pep talk and say, if you have not put any thought into what you're gonna be eating after surgery, do not underestimate how important fueling a good recovery is. You're gonna feel better, you really are gonna heal better. If you have a few months before your surgery, if you can take whatever diet you take and really clean it up, tighten it up, it really will make a difference. And lastly, I just wanna tell you, my breast reduction patients are some of my favorite patients. I think because, you know, all plastic surgery, I think is an investment in yourself, but this really, I feel like is life-changing. If I look at my other, you know, feedback on my other social media platforms, when I posted smaller uh, videos like this about breast reduction, it's amazing the outpouring of people that are, I had mine 20 years ago, I don't regret it, it was amazing. And just um, people are so happy they did it. And it's just, it's a big deal and it's just a big relief. And uh, the more you put into your recovery, it really will make a big difference. And so I'm just excited for you. So thank you for watching. Um, comment below if you have anything that maybe I left out or you'd like my feedback on. Thanks for joining me here and happy healing. So in this video series, I'm gonna teach you the six fundamental things that will ensure a great recovery after plastic surgery. I'm also gonna teach you and show you how to manage your dressings and drains, how to prep your space for a great recovery, and I'm gonna teach you about nutrition, what to eat before and after surgery to fuel the best recovery possible. Don't just survive this, I want you to thrive. I want you to take this opportunity and really do a great job preparing and then reap the benefits. And we're talking about all the things that are gonna guarantee you a great recovery. So let's get started.